All right, hello everyone, and welcome to our session on how curing cough ketosis can improve your stream management and governance. So I'm Jonathan Schabowski, uh, field CTO at Solace. Um, we're gonna do a fun little about me. So my favorite thing to do is to ski and to drink beer. And I'm joined with Caleb New, software architect from Beckler and Frias. And what's your favorite thing to do? Uh, mm. Cook, I love to cook, make fried rice. I will challenge anyone in the audience to a cook off. No right. holds barred. Yeah, so let's do that tonight, maybe. Um, okay, so you're obviously here not to hear about us talk about beer and fried rice. So what is stream management and governance? Great question. So I think we're all obviously here at Kafka Summit because you probably have an event stream platform such as Kafka. You're producing events or real-time data from producers to consumers, and that's obviously great. But, you know, Event stream management and governance is obviously just more than the runtime aspect. There's architectural and design concerns. There's development of how fast are your development teams able to adopt and create new applications. There's a catalog aspect of, you know, how do you know what all of your real-time data assets really are and maybe they're reusable. There's the governance aspect around security and compliance. And ultimately, all of this really forms the boundary around what we would say is stream management and governance. And so Gartner, who I do like, uh, you know, in their top three trends in application architecture that enabled uh, digital business, they state, you know, most organizations today have basic event processing uh, infrastructure such as Kafka, but they really, you know, lack the high level productivity tooling needed uh, to really help developers design, test, manage uh, event centric applications. Um, and the market for these tools historically has been sparse. And so who really needs to focus on stream management? Well, first, and I think it's probably obvious, would be enterprise architects within your organization. They work with the different business domains, they provide best practices and governance, they encourage data sharing usually between the organization, they do package business capabilities. So our enterprise architects is you know, a very important uh, user of stream management. Next up would be the integration teams. Um, you know, Tons of organizations have integration initiatives. They need to know, you know what's available to integrate with, what are the real-time data assets that we could sort of uh, integrate with to build new capabilities. And they really need help with lifecycle management, change management, knowing you know, upstream, downstream dependencies and how changes could affect them. Developers need stream management to have self-service platform access, uh, increase agility in their development speeds. And finally, API management teams. This might surprise some of us, but API management teams have been now you know, having API-led programs for a decade. And you know, they now are looking to expose real-time data stream assets to internal and external third parties and integrate into their existing developer portals. And so I'm gonna take a second here to just talk about a couple of industry stories and the move to expo uh, exposing streams. So take, a, for instance, a large retailer. Um, you know, and this actually transcends country, but large retailers in the US, in Europe, in uh, Asia Pacific, they're all trying to modernize the overall experience that a customer has in doing things like grocery shopping. Um, you know, especially since the pandemic, they've had to evolve how, you know, groceries are fulfilled, how they're delivered, really providing a multi-channel experience. And so to do that, they're looking to expose event streams internally to the business for new insights and uh, capabilities, and even upstream and downstream, such as uh, shipping, um, uh, their, their production, et cetera. Uh, next up would be another example is SAP. So SAP is looking to provide real-time information around ERP data changes so that um, organizations can act in real time to changes of inventory, uh, changes in you know, overall um, you know, patterns of their product usage. Last but not least, and near to dear to my heart, would be you know, aviation in general. I worked a lot with the FAA, and so today, airlines all across the world are consuming live information uh, from uh, uh, organizations such as the FAA and needing to exchange even down within the airline around baggage handling, um, you know, sales and operations, et cetera. And so really every industry is sort of moving towards about exposing real-time streams and Caleb here uh, is gonna talk to us about their use case um, involving Imper devices and uh, their entire industry. Yeah, thanks John. So, hi, Caleb. I'm a software architect for Freeus, which is a Beckler company. Our company works in personal health and safety. We have these adorable little devices that some grandmother's going to wear, push the button, 
emergency responders are there to help. She falls down, system detects it, emergency responders on the line, they help. At Beckler, we also have the companies that run the call centers and do AI engagement and the like. You can see this uh, dapper looking gentleman here wearing one of our devices. And the whole goal is helping people get out and get mobile while being healthy. So uh, this slide, don't spend too much time caring about, it shows a lot of the challenges technically that we have to deal with. Uh, millions of devices. We are very rapidly integrating new devices all the time, new call centers, new location technologies, a lot of business requests. Since we don't sell directly to customers, we sell to businesses that sell to customers, they have specific integration efforts that they want help with. Um, and we do a lot of work to, to meet their needs. Here's just a small list of the protocols we work with. And we've added new protocols almost every year that I've worked for this company. API integrations, very common. Just added new cell carrier with TELUS in Canada. Um, but most importantly, our biggest challenge is lives are on the line. Latency matters. We can't miss a message. We had, as many people do, a really gross monolithic architecture. It was terrible. It was awful. It was all the bad things I'm sure everyone in this room is familiar with. Like a lot of people, we decided to improve things. We went to a microservice architecture based on event-driven data. Um, and that's been great. It's been wonderful. It's really helped improve a lot of things. Um, however, with it came a new set of challenges, uh, things that we didn't really struggle with before, but now are important. How do we communicate um, and understand all of our topic infrastructure, um, all the different streams and things that are going through. When we make one change or do a code release, what are the downstream impacts and risks associated with that? Um, since we have a lot of businesses that rely on us as their fundamental backbone for their enterprise, we need to notify them when they might see a change to a service that we provide them. So we need to understand all of this at a very detailed level. And um, tracking all of this was hard. Um, even just a simple thing of, OK, we have all these microservices. What version of code is running on each one? And who in the company gets visibility to that? Uh, to solve these problems, you know, we've used a lot of things, schema registries, a mountain of Visio diagrams, um, and, and other ones, Lucidchart, and, and all sorts of things. We've tried it all. Uh, it's lots of spreadsheets. But there wasn't like a single spot where anyone in the company could go to and see all of the things they needed to know about the system to make choices. Um. Yeah, and so ultimately, you know, you kind of just heard a little bit about four different use cases around, you know, exposing uh, events in real-time data streams. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, obviously, this starts to look like not an industry problem, whether it's aviation, healthcare, et cetera. It's not an industry problem. It's actually a technology problem. Um, and so that's a technology problem that really, again, it transcends what you're trying to do with your event streams. We don't want to be doing things like Visio diagrams and trying to keep everything up to date. And so what we started to notice was an emerging pattern of challenges with Kafka states. And it's kind of a funny, it, one thing leads to another. So poor discoverability of your data, not knowing really what exists, you know, asking what real-time assets do I really have and not having a good answer leads to no reuse of high value data. No re reuse of high value data also uh, leads to inefficient lifecycle management. You know, even when people are trying to consume it, how do you know of upstream downstream dependencies? Sure, things like schema registry can help with maybe data, uh, in, you know, data changes, but still, how do you communicate as a human being what changes are really gonna happen and maybe it affects them, maybe it doesn't. Um, how do you ensure security and compliance? Most of the organizations we talk to go, oh, of course we use access control lists. And I go, yeah, but how fine grain are they? Do you really know what data attributes are residing in there? If somebody requests access, do you know authoritatively whether you should be granting access or not? And all of this ultimately slows time to value overall. And so as we saw these common symptoms, uh, you know, and you're probably wondering why am I wearing a lab coat? Uh, it's because we actually, just like a doctor would take a set of common symptoms and actually create a diagnosis, we created a diagnosis called Kafkaitosis. It's a noun pathology. It's a potentially serious uh, systemic condition that really causes you know, difficult to control and scale uh, issues with your Kafka estate. 
And so how do you cure kafkatosis, you might wonder. I mean, is there even a cure for kafkatosis, or is it fatal? Well, it's not fatal. Just implement a good event management strategy. Um, and that might sound easy. Actually, there's a lot to think about. Because what a good event management strategy has to enable is you to answer the following kind of key questions. You know, do you have a Kafka system? Uh, do you know the different number of clusters and the topics that reside in them? Do you know all of your access controls for those topics and the data that resides in them? Can your team easily check the impact of uh, upstream or downstream changes? And can you easily find events uh, to reuse? So talking this uh, week with uh, prospects, I have found that in a lot of cases, you can answer maybe one of these yes. Maybe you've created your own tooling that can help you catalog things, but is it synchronized? Do you really know the access controls? Do you do lifecycle management with semantic versions and state control? All of these things really relate to having a proper event management strategy. And so the key capabilities you should really think about are you know, cataloging your data, lifecycle managing that data, and having an API portal experience very similar to API management. So for me, with a ton of Visio diagrams, whiteboarded things, spreadsheets, and suffering, uh, I was thinking, I'm not the only person who went to a microservice architecture. I'm not the only person probably struggling to communicate that with business leaders and project managers and the like. Um, and so I thought, OK, there's got to be some solution somebody's got out there. Let me go and see what I can find. I'm um, stealing this quote from uh, Mr. Jamie here. The performance of microservice architectures may be degraded by the higher cost of communication if the right technology is not used. I felt I was not using the right technology. So what do I do? I don't know how many people in here are programmers, but there's one thing all of us do. I turn to Buddy Google, and I start searching, and I find a lot of people giving their best advice on what Visio diagrams to use, what Lucid chart things to start with, how best to organize your spreadsheets. And I found a blog. Uh, the blog talked about event portal management and why an event portal is very useful. So I gave it a whirl. They had a free trial. Who doesn't love a free trial? Um, I went into their event portal. I start putting in things, and I see, oh, I can have application versions here. I can have topic version tracking. I get this really nice graphic visualizer system where I can drag all these circles around applications, topics, all these different things. I'm thinking, this is great. I work in a complex mesh with multiple pub sub networks communicating to each other. I can model that here. This is awesome. I get to put in cute little descriptive text boxes that okay, probably won't mean a lot to the people in this room, but to the people in the business with the domain knowledge, it's great. Um, moreover, I get to have access control. Maybe a project manager should be able to see something, but I don't need them changing topic schema, so let's keep their hands off of that. No offense to any project managers in the room. I'm sure you are great people. Um, the event portal has this catalog that is almost uh, the best thing. Of course, it doesn't wow people in crowds as much as the you know, graphic thing with all the bubbles and the lines. But it's awesome. Uh, here you can see just a few things, applications, events, schemas. If you're actually on the portal, you'll see a bunch of other options there for things that might be more neat to you. But to me, these are the real special things. Um, I get to click into that guy and instantly get a detailed view. I get to see cute descriptive text, tell somebody here what it's about. I get to see what type of broker this is on. This is on a Kafka broker. Um, I get to see the topic address and all of its uh, gory detail. Down below, I get to see what applications are subscribed to this topic. I get to see what, you know, who publishes to this. One more click in, down in this section down here, and you get to see the schema. A versioned schema that tracks it. Our quality uh, insurance team has a bunch of automation engineers building a detailed framework of automated tests because we care about your grandma and we want the code to work and for her to get help. So with just two clicks, we went from that list of everything we have that's searchable and filterable to a detailed schema object that's up to date, versioned, and access controlled across the company. So that's pretty awesome to me. Just a quick look at this. Um, this is a pretty new thing. They, I click on those dots, I hit show relationships, and it instantly populates the sort of nearest neighbors 
of that object, whether it's an application or event or a schema, it doesn't matter. I can just click, boom, see where this thing's used, see the nearest neighbors, the little flow there. It doesn't show on the slide, but if you highlight, you get to see um, the direction of all those arrows much more detailed. So to me, this is great. I got all of our stuff in there in about three uh, hours or so. It's now being used in, in product meetings. I get to sh show, you know, these are the microservices impacted by this change. This is how easy it is because we already have this data right here. Um, for communicating code release to all of the people inside the business that need to decide who gets the messaging from our uh, dealer partners, all that's there. And it's just a daily part of our workflow. It's very nice. Sorry for going over on time. It's all right. So I'll leave you with a couple of last things to think about. So you know, as he went through that, it should, if you've used API management type solutions, it should seem kind of similar. Well, that's the entire idea since you know, RESTful architecture has had API gateways now for a very long time. On top of API gateways, which is the runtime, you would have the API portal that provides a bunch of the capabilities that Caleb just discussed. Obviously, in the event-driven world, including with Kafka, you know, we've had these things for uh, quite a long time at this point, but we've kind of been missing that API portal corollary into the event-driven world. So that's why we at Solace built the event portal. Um, but one of the latest things that we've seen in the last year really starting to, to, to emerge is, you know, the business doesn't want to have a, you know, place for developers to go for REST APIs and a different place for people to go to event-driven uh, APIs because an API is an API, a business capability is a business capability. And so now what we are starting to see is the emergence of how these things are converging together. You know, or, you know, API management companies like Gravity and MuleSoft and Axway providing integrations to event portals such as Solace's in order to provide a unified API experience, you know, so you can find all your graph uh, QL APIs, your RESTful APIs, and your event streams all in one developer portal, so a developer can choose what interaction style best fits their use case and uh, business purpose. And so, to summarize, you know, a good event management strategy will help you provide capabilities, you know, as shown in that box, which will ultimately help you with increased visibility, it'll help with developer productivity, you'll have faster application onboarding through self-service platform access, and you'll have a streamlined lifecycle management capability so that ultimately you can bring new event-driven streaming capabilities to the business faster. And so any talk wouldn't be complete without something for you to do. So as you can see, there's a QR code. You can scan it, and that scan will ask you, you know, basically you'll take a small eight-question survey. That eight-question survey will actually help to preliminarily diagnose your, uh, you know, your possibility for having kafkatosis. I know it sounds serious, uh, but there are ways to, again, get that into remission by talking to us at our booth. 206, and by also doing that short survey, that'll enter you into the raffle today for the QB Go, which is a little portable elliptical. So not only can you make your Kafka health better, you can make your personal health better. So do the, uh, do the short survey, figure out if you have Kafka Tosis or not, and then certainly come and talk to us at booth 206. So I appreciate everybody coming. Uh, hope you have a good rest of your conference.